Yo, yo, it's J Baby the Grady, and I just jumped off the porch with dirty glove bastards. You dig? Wah! Yeah, everybody know me. Hood, Way too turned to keep it low key. Hood, Hood, Hood. All right, so we got my boy J Baby the Grady jumping off the porch with us today, man. Let's jump off the porch, baby. Yes, sir. How, How you feeling today, man? I'm just excited to be here, man. For real, for real. I'm I love everything y'all do here at this platform, you know what I'm saying? I want to come chop my shit and talk my shit with you, you know? For sure, man. Nah, I appreciate you swinging by. We've been talking about this for a minute, so happy we're able to, Yeah, you happy know, we're able to get it together. Make yeah. this happen, man. For sure, for sure. Yeah, that's what's good, bro. All right, so let's take it back, man. You're originally from St. Louis, right? Yeah, originally from St. Louis, Missouri, born and raised, yeah. Okay. Born and raised, St. Louis. Yeah, so kind of just talk about, you know, the culture up there in St. Louis, man. What's it really like? For, some people, for people that have never been there before. Real? <laughs> um, everybody just kind of like stay to themselves. You know what I'm saying? You know? It's just everybody's direct too. You know, you can't be no, um, can't really be fake in St. Louis. You got to really just stand on what you, your principle, or whatever you go about. Uh, it's definitely grimy. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely a place where you got to make sure you're on ten toes at all times, you know. But uh, for the most part, it's a beautiful city. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if you, well, I'm from it, you know, so it's different when you're from something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's one of the most beautiful cities in the world, you know. Yeah. Not really so as far as, like, landscaping and all that. We got the arts. But I'm talking about as far as, like, the people, the energy, you know what I'm saying, the, uh, the aura. The, the, the people who came before us, the history, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's beautiful, you know, you just, uh, there's a lot of shit going on down there though. You gotta be, protect yourself. No, absolutely, yeah, I think every year, it's always up there, like the top murder rate. One number of the one again, cities, number one, number one again right now. We, we went down to like number three a couple of years ago and two, yeah. and now we're back number one again, yeah. you know. So how does it feel to be able to, you know, make it out of an environment like that, to be able to survive and be successful doing you know, something away from the streets and all that. Super good. You know, I got I got people in St. Louis right now that just can't get out. I mean, niggas just going to jail, niggas just dying. They just can't get out of the system, you know, or can't just break the code or the cycle, yeah. you know. But for the most part, I just, I'm just a, a, a grateful, you know what I'm saying? Appreciative, you know what I'm saying? It just stay prayed up, you know. It ain't just me that made it happen, you know what I'm saying? It's definitely the big dog, you know. Yes, Give all praise to him, you know what I'm saying? Because I got people that did the same thing I did as far as music and or play sports, you know what I'm saying? And just couldn't make it out. Yeah. You know, so I'm definitely grateful. No, nah, it's definitely a blessing, man. That's for sure, bro. Yeah. 100. Super blessed. Triple blessed. Yeah. So going back to your childhood, like what were you into as a kid growing up there in St. Louis then? Music. My mama was a rapper. <laughs> she was a rapper. Um, she was signed to Nelly. Well, she wasn't signed directly to Nelly, but they was on the same label, label for real entertainment. Okay. Cool to love. Shout out to Cool to Love in New York. But um, me as a child was kind of, uh, I was grown. I never was really a child for real, cause I I performed with my mama since I was like six years old, <laughs> and so performing with her and then going to football practice, it was like a disconnect, cause like I'm I'm going to the show in the club tonight and I'm in there with my coaches. You know what I'm saying? Literally, like That's my coach, wild, like right bro, like you better play them more and do what you gotta do them more. I'm in the club with them the night before the game. You know what I'm saying? Real shit, no bullshit. So my life was, uh, I never really been a child. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie. I was always grown, always in grown people business. You know what I'm saying? I always had a smart ass mouth. So for me as a child, I just used to try to be like my mama, you know, cause she was a rapper and I was just trying to get to where she was. I really like music. Yeah. So as a child, I was just active, bad, you know, Anything that regular kids do, you know what I'm saying? Nothing, nothing too crazy. I never, had, I ain't have a bad childhood like that until she went to prison. You know oh what I'm wow. At nine years old, you know. Oh wow. So when she went to prison, my first day of fourth grade, you know what I'm saying? So imagine everybody in fourth grade with your mamas and they dropping off the lunch boxes and shit. Hmm. I'm sitting at the table like, damn, my mama finna go for 36 months. True. Yeah. So me as a child was just like, you know, grown as fuck. You know, so I ain't never really been a kid. Yeah. What was your mom's rap name? Penelope Jones. Okay, yeah. Shout out my mama, man. She the reason I do this shit. For real, for real. Yeah. You know? Without so, her, I probably wouldn't be doing it. Right. 
So what was it like, you know, getting the taste, like you said, performing at six, seven years old, man? What was, it, what was that experience like for you as a kid to be able to go in these clubs to where? You shouldn't even been in there to begin with. You know I went one saying? time, I had a show. Okay, the first time we had a show, it was at a club. It was a 21 notice spot. And she went to the club. It was actually a club called Society. So shout out to everybody know about the club Society at St. Louis. And we went, we go to the club and we get to the door. The bouncer's like, y'all got this kid with y'all. He can't get in. <laughs> My mama's so thorough, though. She like, if he don't get in, we don't perform tonight. And dude looking like it. But everybody here to see you. She like, I don't care what you talking about. If he, he can't come in, he part of the show. He performed with us. He can't come in, we don't do the show. So just shit like that was just like amazing back in the days. You know what I'm saying? Just like super lit. And then I get to leave from there, do that, and go to school or football practice the next day and tell all my partners I was with their mamas and daddies last night. Like, why kicked it with your daddy last night? I'm like, nigga, you ain't kicking with my daddy last Yeah, I was in the club with your dad last night, man. It's crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No bullshit. 100. No, that's hard, man. Not too many kids get a chance to experience that, especially to be on stage performing and all that. Yeah, too. and when she got our big deal, she made me a hype man. So in high school, oh, imagine wow. a hype, yeah, so in high school, shh, that's when it was crazy, you know what I'm saying? Performing with Lil Wayne and all that, and then going to school, and then the girls from the school see you on stage with Wayne, and they like, you were just on stage? Yeah, I was. No <laughs> bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna cap you. So yeah, that's. It's always been lit. Life has always been good. You know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't complain. You know, I have, I've had trauma like yeah. any other person. You know, real shit that happened to really, really fuck you up. But, you know, I just know what I want. You know, I want this shit bad. So, I just stay moving. Yeah. So I good. What would you say was one of the biggest obstacles you had to overcome in your life then? Uh, I got a beautiful daughter that's eight. And I have a new beautiful daughter that's six months mm. and like my one of my my, my new daughter I, I'm fortunate enough and in a best in a position to uh, be around her more but like one of the biggest things I had to overcome was uh leaving my daughter the first time for my record deal with Smino mm. you know what I'm saying when I left that first time I don't think people understand like what that really did to me and her relationship and what it really did to me you know what I'm saying because I was hands-on every day picking up the school, taking the school, you know what I'm saying? Whenever I can, when I ain't on work, or my mom ain't helping me, I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. But then it got to a point where I wasn't around at all. You know what I'm saying? That, that kind of that kind of threw me off a little bit. It's some days I'd be like, damn, I need to be there for this, or I should be there for that. But, you know, I want this shit. You know what I'm saying? I know if I get this shit, it'll help her in the long run. So but that's one of the main things I was like, I would say within this and within my life periods, like over, and then death, I had a lot of death in my family. so. Mm-hmm. Overcoming that too, you know what I'm saying? Like uncles, aunties, grandmother, great grandmother, you know what I'm saying? A lot of that, you know what I'm saying? That's like one of the main things that you gotta yeah. overcome, especially in St. Louis. That shit go down, you know what I'm saying? But it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Same old, same old. I feel that, yeah. Sure. So, what has being a father taught you about life these past eight years? Now? <sighs> patience. I don't got patience. I'm impatient. <laughs> I don't like waiting for shit. I like to do it now, you know what I'm saying? We discussing it, we talking about it, let's make it happen. But since I had my daughter, I realized that like, well, both my daughters, that patience, bro. Especially with my older daughter, like she, she a lot like me. She don't got no patience. So having the patience for her, you know what I'm saying? Making sure she don't make certain decisions. It's just, it's, it's, it's a new uh, venture. But it's cool, you know what I'm saying? I'm open to all new things, you know. I'm growing, you know what I'm saying? I'm getting older and older and wiser and wiser, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, my daughter definitely helped me understand that um, it's not just about me no more, yep. you know what I'm saying? It's, it's way more than just me, you know. I got to have some patience with other things. I'm trying to rush and get this done, this first done or something, and it's something that may really be going on with her that she need help at that, that can wait, you know. So that's what I'm learning right now, you yeah. know, patience and, it ain't always about me. You know? Real shit, man. Yeah. So you mentioned the deal with Smino. How did that come about? Uh, me and Smino went to high school together. Okay. That nigga actually beat me for best rapper in high school, man. <laughs> like, that shit, man, that fucked with me. So it fucked with me so bad. <laughs> nah, it did. It fucked with me so bad that right after he won, I asked him to battle me for it. Like, hey, bro, you got to battle me. Like, the votes was off and shit, you know. <laughs> I wasn't feeling it, but he was actually very talented though. Out of all the people that I could see in the school, it was definitely bro, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, cool, we battled. I got off on the battle, he got off on the battle. 
we became partners. You know okay. what I'm saying? We was cool, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm at work one day, I'm working at Sprint. A couple years later, he go to he go to Chicago to school and I went to San Diego to go to school. At the time I'm back home from San Diego, I'm working a job, I'm like fuck it, I'm working at Nike. I'm working. And then a homeboy playing this muted song. I'm like, this song tight, what's that? He likes some uh, uh Smino. I'm like, oh, who was dude? I look over and it's bruh. I'm like, man, I went to school with bro. That's my bro. You know what I'm saying? I know him. Dude, he was so out of here, though. He was so lit at the time. And dude was like, no, bro. You don't know him. <laughs> if you knew him, you wouldn't be in this motherfucking Nike factory with me. There's no way you know him. Like, he lit. Like, he from Chicago. I said, nah, fuck nah. He ain't from Chicago. He went to high school with me. You know what I'm saying? We argue about it, argue about it. And just so happened, brother, in, in like 15 minutes on my lunch break, my cousin sent me an interview of Smino. Hmm. He like, bro, look at this interview. So I look at the interview. In the interview, it's a dude talking about how Smino beat me for the best rap. Really? I don't, randomly, bro. I'm talking about the most random shit of my life. I walked out. I quit my job. Really? You know, my daughter. I quit that motherfucker on the spot. This ain't for me no more. If the niggas I'm doing it with, niggas I was competing with, and people I see myself in the same room with, they doing it, I just, I, it's no way I'm supposed to be here working no job. You know what I'm saying? And I was really working because I was trying to stay out of trouble. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For real, for real. Because at the time, that was at a time where niggas was outside. You know what I'm saying? So you might want to get a job. You know, you know what I'm saying? For real. And so I'm working. I'm gigging it up, trying to change myself. And man, this nigga Smee just took off. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah. So I got in my bag. Went back, you know what I'm saying? Did what I do and, you know, ran the bag up. You know what I'm saying? And shot my own shit. Start putting my own music out. I said, fuck it. I'm like, all right, shit, fuck the jobs and shit. I'm quit all the job shit. I'm just gonna hustle and make sure I do my own shit to make sure this music shit work. I put a video up online, and the nigga Smino hit me. First, he was one of the first motherfuckers to hit me. Really? I'm like, that, that shit tight. Then he had the nerve to call me. This is the funny part about it. He called me on FaceTime. He like, DM me. So I DM the number. He called me. He like, bro, you remember me? <laughs> I said, nigga, you made me quit my job. Do I remember you? Yeah, yeah, I remember you. Shit, not only was we cool in high school, he was my partner, but nigga, you lit around the city right now. You know what I'm saying? So that shit happened, and he was like, well, if you ever out somewhere, and I'm, I'm nerding, pull up. He just so happened to be in Atlanta the next week. I ain't take no chances. I went. I didn't even know he was going to be in Atlanta. I happened to just come out here. I wasn't even living out here yet. Went. And it's been it's been up ever since. You know what I'm saying? He flew me out to LA, and I ain't stopped rocking with bro since. That's hard right there. That's everything. He a real nigga, man. One of the realest niggas I've met in this rap shit. And I've been doing this rap shit a long time because yeah. of my mama. So I've been doing it super long. Man. Niggas ain't solid as me. That's mm -hmm. 100. Shout out, bro. Bro got an album coming out next week too. Yeah, I think he just dropped the video. Larry just got an email like <laughs> five minutes ago. He just dropped it. You, think you know what's funny? I didn't think. I you know what's funny. I know he dropped the song. I didn't know he dropped the video. So. Yeah. I'm finna go watch like you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, Straight I just up. got the email about it. Yeah, shout out, bro. Yeah, bro, definitely uh, helped change my life. You know what I'm saying? It was some real nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I was able to stop fucking around with whatever I was fucking around with and being outside and working jobs and doing all that shit to straight making money off some shit that I've been wanting to do forever. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, forever fuck with, bro. Yeah. So, what uh, inspired the move down here to Atlanta then? Me and bro talking, like trying to play off each other. He was like, you know, you know, you should just probably stay somewhere that for your market. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Plus, realistically, when I got my bag, I got a nice bag, but I wasn't finna blow it out in L.A. Fuck you, shit, that <laughs> random shit. I thought was crazy. Should be going. That time. shit was crazy. I'm a real nigga. You niggas wouldn't tell you to say that, I, but I gotta say it because it's like. I want these niggas and everybody else just coming up or people behind me or in position to understand that, bro, it's deeper than just trying to maintain an Instagram life or you know, social media life, you know what I'm saying? He got real shit going on. He got kids, you know what I'm saying? He got, you know, so I got to put all that in play, you know what I'm saying? And Atlanta was perfect for me. I can still ball out crazy. I can still have a nice ass crib, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 live, I live well. I'm cool. Happy as fuck, you know what I'm saying? But that's that's definitely what the move was like. And plus, this is just the scene for music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is where all the music and interviews and 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 movie sets and shit is coming to. You know what I'm saying? That shit finna be here in a minute. You know what I'm saying? This is Black Hollywood. So, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So I came down here to fuck with my people. I love it.
Yeah. How would you compare the music scenes, you know, in St. Louis to Atlanta, or is there no comparison between the two? You know, it's funny. I did most of my my leg work for my music in L.A. Me flew me to L.A. and I ain't never look back. But I would say it's a uh, they stick together down here. They uh they like to work together. And in St. Louis, you got your cliques, you got your crews of people. We gonna do songs over here with them. I might do a little song. I got a single or something that's gonna drop. You know, he got a song or two over there, you know, but everybody together, like everybody rooting for each other like that, it's kinda it's hard to do, you know. And then the little young cats that's younger than me and the other younger generation, they kinda scattered, you know, kinda in tour with each other and shit like that. So it's it's kinda it's way different, honestly. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely yeah. it's definitely different because they helping you here. But it's cool though. St. Louis is getting there. We definitely got some people that's coming up. We, I'm, I'm super, super proud and super proud and excited for everything we got going on and what's finna come on. Like St. Louis will be there. Give us about a year or so. We'll, yeah, there's we'll so much talent in that man, city. Man, we, we picking up. You know what I'm saying? We're getting, we getting more and more artists every day. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Every day. You've been going crazy with these EPs, man. You got white belt, make sure, make sure I get these right. White belt, yellow belt, orange belt, blue belt, purple belt, and red belt belt to drop, right? Got a green belt too. Green, damn, see, I missed one. <laughs> no, it's just like, I did it in the, the reason they made me say green when you said it, because I'm thinking about it, did I miss one? Because it's like, <laughs> no, nah, because I'd be forgetting, but I don't want to never disrespect the culture and why I did it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I did it for, uh, Cause I, I fuck with the, uh, the uh, Bruce Lee and the Taekwondo belts and you know what I'm saying. So, and the belts when you're doing you know karate, you got white belt, you know yellow belt, orange belt. You know what I'm saying. So I just kept the belt spectrums going, and I'm gonna end with black belt as an album. Okay. So I'm saying. So I'm trying to tell a story and kind of fill people in on what I do and who I am, and give them a body of work because I'm new. Only song people really know from me or know is the song I got with Smino on his uh, She Already Decided album, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or And my other single, Stoney, that I, I put out under, under the label last year, you know what I'm saying? But now I'm starting to pick up a little more, you know, get a, a whole catalog, a whole body of work, not just one tape, you know what I'm saying? Plus I'm trying to change the game a little bit. You know, I, everybody been dropping music kind of like, you know, I think the pandemic made people feel more kind of, you know, I'm gonna take my time more, let's wait more. We already waited this long. Why not wait another two weeks, two months? And then two months turned into a year, a year turned into two years. Nah, I'm just flooding the streets. Flood the streets, let the fans pick, let the kids decide, let the fans decide, and go from there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Something's gonna take off. I got enough music to do it oh, for the next yeah. four years if I wanted to. So really? let's just keep going. You know what I'm saying? Anybody, any rappers <laughs> wanna just have a music off? Let's do it. Uh, talk to us about this Biggie Shorty song and video, man. <laughs> Biggie Shorty. That came about with Pootie Tang. That's okay. Pootie Tang. Yeah, yeah I, um, I like the movie Pootie Tang a lot. And I was like, fucking, I'm Grady Tang, you know what I'm saying? And so I just changed the whole narrative of Pootie Tang and just made it some modern day shit, some me type shit. And use characters. I always want to use characters in my videos. I don't ever want to act like, like super duper hard. Like, Nigga want to see what's up with me, you can see what's up with me in real life. Just think what you want to think about the videos. It's, yeah. it's okay. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't have a problem with the ego like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's art. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to have fun with the shit. You know what I'm saying? It's what it's made for. You know what I'm saying? Be different. Everybody got 90 guns in their fucking videos. You know what I'm saying? Just standing around with the homeboys. And shit was dope for Chief Keith. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shit was dope for a couple of niggas after that. You know? Shit ain't going to keep being dope for the next five years. You know, so, you know, you know, since I look at that shit, you know what I'm saying? You might want to do something different. So I just always think out the box, bro. Do something different. Do what's in my heart. You know what I'm saying? Do what I like to do. Mm -hmm. And make sure it's fly and cool. You know, can't never do nothing corny. Can't never do nothing that's just too left. You know what I'm saying? I'm like right in the middle. I'm a nigga that ain't going to never go too left. But I'm going to always be like right left. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm in the middle. Yeah. No, the video's hard, man. I fuck with this shit. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. it. I just try to do something different every time, bro. It's just never the same. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Even if I'm putting a wig on every video. Let's say I'm putting a wig on every video, hypothetically. You know what I'm saying? Pause. I got to pause on certain shit. But 
if I'm rocking a wig and doing a, I'm just making it different. I just want it to be super duper different. You know what I'm saying? Nothing like it was the last time. Yeah. That's it. You know what I'm saying? It's too much of that shit. That shit back to back. Nah, I'm, I'm getting wore out of the same shit. You know what I'm saying? Nah, it's easy to get burnt out. Doing yeah, the same I'm getting man. Over. That shit. That like shit. Like just telling the video man to pull up and. And just, just shoot doing shit in front and of it, the it was fun. It was cool and it was cheap. It was easy. You know what I'm saying? Give a nigga three, four hundred dollars for a video. Every video, I damn, I right, cool. Let's go twelve hundred. Let's just shoot three. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But now it's like, nigga, I'm paying twelve hundred dollars for makeup. You know what I'm saying? I don't even get makeup. It's for other motherfuckers. It's in the video. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, it's what it is. Yeah. It's what it is, bro. Growth, picking up. You know what I'm saying? This, like, I'm glad niggas is dilly digging the different videos and shit on. Yeah, you know absolutely. Really, it kind of helps you stand out from everyone else. That's for hell sure. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I ain't trying and to. And gives it that shit. replay value to where someone wants to go back and watch it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. And then yeah, I keep them short. Well, I actually put two videos together with that the Biggest Shorty and I think Turn It together. Mm -hmm. I put them yeah. together because both songs were super short. So I'm like, let me put them together in this. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was trying to think ahead. Be Slick with little small shit, two videos in one, you know. I don't know. I don't be seeing a lot of people doing it no more. No. You know what I'm saying? The game is not there no more. It's just everybody doing the same shit, same shit. Yeah, most artists want to keep their shit short now. Yeah, they want to keep it short, which is cool, you know what I'm saying? But if you ain't, if you want to keep it short because you know it ain't nothing that somebody finna sit there and watch. You know what I'm saying? That's what I <laughs> That's think about, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, like, let's keep this shit short. Yeah. We just outside in front of some trucks, so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but nah. And it's no disrespect to that. Cause I like it, you know what I'm saying? It works, it's worked. It's proven that it works, you know what I'm saying? It keep working, but I'm just trying to change some shit, man. For real, yeah. that's all. And this whole series has been presented by Carrots. Mm -hmm. Talk about that connection. Mm -hmm. My brody, and wore Carrots, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I was doing the shit with Sme and locked in with Sme. And while I'm with Sme, you know what I'm saying? I meet and wore, you know what I mean? And wore just, you know, chopped it up on a different level, like, Bro Vision is crazy on certain shit, you know what I'm saying? I had an album from the drop before the Belt series that yeah. I was finna put out myself. And he was like, he just called me on the phone, he was talking, he's like, what you working on? Oh, I'm working on uh, this little shit. He like, hey, you know what you should do? You should call it Black Belt. I'm like, nah, I can't just call it Black Belt. I'm like, Black Belt hella tight though. It's a hella dope name for an album. But I'm like, we can't just call it Black Belt. Like, you gotta have, like, I gotta lead up to that. He like, fuck it, nigga, do white, yellow, orange. I'm like, wow. So we, you know, we collectively, you know what I'm saying? But he definitely was like, yo, you should do more than one, bro. Like, white, man, oh, you got enough music. Cause I sent him so much music one day, I just shocked him, you know what I'm saying? I sent him a photo that had like 100 songs in it. He like, damn, you know? And so that's how we, that's how me and bro locked up. You locked in, you know what I'm saying? He's super genuine, bro. He's super real. He's one of the one of the realest niggas I ever met. Period. You know what I'm saying? Cause he he, he his realness on a different level. I ain't even talking about in the industry, cause I ain't even really in the game yet. But I'm talking about as far as just like real niggas as you just meet, like a nigga you went to school with or something like that. That nigga's a, he's a solid one though. He do shit he don't gotta do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 100. He a real one. You know what I'm saying? And he definitely. Yeah, it's helping me do everything I'm doing right now. You know what I'm saying? And we rocking out all the way till black. Then we got some new shit after black we working on. Me and bro working. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So shout out to Curse and War and everything he got going on. You know what I'm saying? Sure, for sure, for sure. So Red Belt, Trapaholics you got on here, right? Trapaholics, yeah. That's legendary. Man. Yeah, it's legendary. It's exciting, too. And War, I, I did again. <laughs> I'm chilling one day. I'm with the rocking my baby. I'm feeding the baby. He like, hey, bro. <laughs> We doing trapaholics. I'm like, we doing trapaholics, what you mean? He's like, man, fuck it, we're gonna do a trapaholics tape. I'm like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? I sent him seven songs. <laughs> he like, hey man, fuck it, let's upload this. We uploaded the seven songs and then it just didn't feel right. And another producer, my homeboy Yuri, shout out Yuri, he on the beat, on the on the tape, and he sent he sent he sent me a couple beats. And I'm like, yeah, it just didn't feel right to just send seven songs for a trapaholics tape. When you said that like the old school nostalgia is legendary, mm -hmm. so we went crazy and added 22 songs to it. So that motherfucker like a real live oh, wow. trapaholics mixtape yeah. back in the day. Yeah, and I and I it's one of the best things I could have did because I love it. Yeah. And I love it. You know what I'm saying? People get reacting. It's just dropped today. 
It's right yeah. now. It's out right now. Right yeah, now, it's yeah. live right now. I wrote so down go get October twenty. That man just looked at my yeah, calendar. Yeah, yeah, it's live it right now. Go get it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, yeah. what should people expect to hear on Black Belt? Like these songs you've been saving. Like, all right, this is Black Belt material. Or? I've been working on them for a while. I had some of them before I even got, before I even thought of the idea of Black Belt. But I got a couple more to do, and. This is the album where people should, if people gonna keep playing with me or sleeping on me or whatever the case may be, this the album that's gonna make them understand. Yeah, this will be the album because I'm gonna go get features on it. Okay. This is what they want. I'm gonna give them what they want. On this one. You know what I'm saying? I had to make sure J Baby Pockets was right. You know what I'm saying? I had to. You know, <laughs> I can't fake it. And that's another thing, artists. I don't understand why y'all go blow all that money on them features fast like I was about to do it I was trying to do it and it's just never gonna work it's just never gonna work if you're a real nigga and you got priorities and you got shit you're trying to do because if that shit don't work I've seen a lot of big features that don't work mm -hmm. shit don't work boy that's your ass you it's know what I'm saying money wasted, it's, yeah, it's a lot of money wasted bro wasted you know what I'm saying from a nigga that you could have built a relationship with bro if he really fuck with you he can gave that shit for free you know what I'm saying? It's just, and that's another thing about the industry too. Like, nigga, the gay that shit for free, man. So, I'm just learning. I'm learning yeah. a lot, bro. You know what I'm saying? So when I told myself when I get on any platform, I'm always gonna chop game with niggas that ain't even around that's coming up, just watching my shit, so they can always understand that hey, it's deeper than what you see. You know what I'm saying? Niggas will come over here and just be like, yeah, we just living, we just bought a yacht, twelve boats. Niggas is cap, man. <laughs> See these niggas in the motherfucking club, and you in the motherfucker with the bottles and shit. And like, what the fuck, yo? Where's your boats? Where's the yachts? You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. Shit getting fun. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The more and more I see that, the shit getting fun and funner. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie to you. No, that's funny. Man. Yeah, for sure. What's some short term? What's some long term goals you got set for yourself right now, Jay? Uh, short term. It's just to keep working. A lot of people overlook that goal. My short-term goal is to just keep, keep being able to do what I'm doing right now. You know what I'm saying? Whatever I'm doing right now, it's working. I just want to have, I want to wake up every day with the same focus. You know what I'm saying? That's a short-term goal. Just to, tomorrow, I want to be able to do the same thing I did today. You know what I'm saying? I came here, I, I worked, just keep working. Long-term goal, I don't think I really got none for real. Because I don't ever want this shit to stop. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I could give you a lot of long term, long terms, like, yo, I want this shit to keep going, but I, I got infinity goals. Like, I don't want this shit to stop ever. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just don't. This is where I'm at with it. I do want to see my daughters, you know what I'm saying? Like, on some, on some super lit, super lit shit, you know what I'm saying? Forever, you know what I'm saying? So they kids, they kids, they kids can be lit. You know, but minus that though, bro, I just, Man, success, you know what I'm saying? Success, you know, humbleness, stay humble, stay grounded, and keep working. Yeah. That's it. I don't really got no goals set because every time I set a goal, every time you set a goal, it's like, um, you set the motherfucker, you reach the motherfucker, you beat it, but then all you gonna do is set another one. You know what I'm saying? That's all you gonna do is set another goal. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really, you know, I don't really just look at nothing small. I just go for it. It's all in one. My goal is to just fuck it all up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For real, for real. That's just, that's, that's real, that's, that's real, that's 100. That's just how my mind think. Like this is, I want it all. Yeah, ain't nothing Straight wrong with up. that. Yeah. You got any advice you want to share to the youth coming up right now? Shit, I gave it to y'all, man. Just keep pushing. Stay out the streets if you can. That shit ain't nothing there. That shit ain't shit. So many motherfucking OGs that I got, and so many people I got that do bids or, or lose shit or be grown and be like, oh man, I shouldn't have did the streets. And the streets, you know, I learned that shit fast. You know what I'm saying? I had my first little, my couple little encounters. I seen niggas for what it was and seen what it was gonna be. I vowed to let that shit rock. You want something bad enough, you'll let that shit rock. You know what I'm saying? So just keep going, man. Can't really tell these little like, young niggas nothing. I really won't try to, cause these little young niggas, they just different. So I just tell them to just keep going and just stay out the way, you know what I'm saying? If you're gonna do what you're gonna do, just, just stay out the way and just kind of be cool about it. 
you know, just don't be on all the lives and the IGs and all that shit, you know what I'm saying? And get you some paper and, you know what I'm saying, and be smart, stay out the way, you know. That's all I can really tell the little young cats, because these little young niggas doing shit that <laughs> niggas is 25 ain't doing this shit now, so there ain't really nothing you can tell them. Just, you know, I just pray for them. Hope they, hope they do their thing. You're gonna say, man. Yeah. For sure. All right, Jay, you got any shout outs you'd like to give before you wrap it up here, bro? Man, I just want to shout out to my baby. Shout my little babies out. Shout out K Baby, Kobe, you know what I'm saying? Shout my little ones out and shit. That's it for real. I'm just doing it for the kids and the scam the game, you know what I'm saying? And War, you know what I'm saying? Shmino, you know, my little brother, you know, my, my cousins, just family, you know, I ain't really. I really want to show motherfuckers it ain't even about coming on here and trying to shout out names. Like, I can shout out a thousand names, but who I'm really helping in reality, you know what I'm saying? Or what I'm really doing some shit with in reality, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm just chilling, man. Shout out to everybody that's doing their thing. Keep doing your thing, you know what I'm saying? And J-Baby on the way. That's all I can tell niggas. Just, 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 just be ready. I'm on the way. For real. Yeah, everybody.